So here's the truth. This video isn't just about what's on paper. It's about what actually changes when you put both drones in the air. Because numbers can tell you something, but flying tells you everything. I've been testing both the DJI NEO 1 and the NEO 2 side by side, back to back, in real conditions. Wind, low light, short bursts between buildings, that classic sunset at the coast. And today, I'm going to tell you what matters, what doesn't, and who should actually upgrade. First, a quick note. If you enjoy honest comparisons before the global release of new DJI gear, consider subscribing. Since I'm based here in China, I usually get to test these products a little earlier. And if you decide to grab either of these drones later, I'll drop my affiliate links to both NEO 1 and NEO 2 inches the description. You can check them for the latest availability in your region. All right, let's get into it. Design and build feel. At first glance, they look like siblings. But the moment you hold them, you feel it. NEO 2 has grown up. It's slightly heavier, around 151 grams versus 135 on the original. But that weight isn't a downgrade. It adds stability. The first NEO sometimes felt twitchy in crosswinds. NEO 2 settles itself mid-gust, holds its line, and feels planted almost like a mini version of DJI's larger drones. The propeller redesign also makes a difference. They sound softer, less mosquito, more whisper. When you're flying near people or recording audio from the ground, that matters. DJI also made the prop guard frame sturdier. It's still fully enclosed, so beginners don't have to fear a crash, but the new version flexes less and recovers faster after impact. It's subtle but noticeable once you fly both. Camera and gimbal experience. Now, on paper, NEO 2 doubles the frame rate to 4K 60 and even 100 frames per second. But that spec isn't what makes the footage feel better. It's the dual axis gimbal. NEO 1's single axis setup could only correct for roll, so every tilt or pitch had to rely on digital stabilization. That caused micro jitter and warping when you pushed it too hard. NEO 2 physically stabilizes both axes, so pans and dives look cinematic instead of nervous. The color and sharpness out of camera? Similar tone, classic DJI contrast, and cool whites. But NEO 2's processing feels cleaner. You can lift the shadows without bringing noise. And the added high frame rate option gives editors more freedom to slow things down gracefully. Flight brain and smart behavior. Here's where the evolution really shows. NEO 2 introduces what DJI calls smart flight intelligence. Fancy name, but it actually works. The drone doesn't just react to your commands, it starts to anticipate them. After a few repeated routes, it subtly adjusts angles and micro movements to help you keep your subject framed. If you fly the same line along a beach three times, by the fourth, it's compensating for wind drift and softening your stops automatically. NEO 1 was reliable but robotic. NEO 2 feels intuitive like it's learning your rhythm. That's the biggest invisible upgrade people won't see on a spec sheet. Obstacle sensing and confidence. Both drones are built for safety, but NEO 2 steps into a new league with omnidirectional obstacle sensing. You can think of it as a bubble of awareness around the drone fly toward a tree, and it slows gently before you even notice. It's not foolproof you still have to pilot responsibly, but it removes that tiny fear of clipping a branch when you're concentrating on your shot. NEO 1 only had downward sensors for positioning. It could hover precisely, but anything in front of it was your problem. For new pilots, that single difference changes everything. You start trusting the drone instead of babysitting it. Control options and range. Both NEO 1 and NEO 2 work with DJI's RCN3 and RC2 controllers, and both speak the same 04 digital link language for long-range stable video. NEO 1 could already reach impressive distances, but NEO 2's firmware and antennas are cleaner, less dropout in busy Wi-Fi zones. With just a phone, range jumps from 50 meters on NEO 1 to 5 to 100 on NEO 2, so casual flyers notice it immediately, Latency on the dedicated remotes feels tighter too. 
When you pan quickly, the screen feed keeps up better, which helps a lot for tracking people or fast motion. Battery and power management. This is the controversial one. Neo 1 batteries physically fit Neo 2 but don't work. DJI changed the connector and added an ID handshake for safety. That upset Neo 1 owners who stocked up on spares. But in practice, the new packs perform better. They cool faster and hold voltage more consistently during aggressive climbs. I average about 16 to 17 minutes per charge with reserve left. DJI claims 19 and that feels realistic in light wind. So yes, you lose cross compatibility, but you gain consistency. If you've ever watched your Neo 1 dip voltage mid-flight and auto land early, you know why this matters. Smart modes and ease of use. Neo 1 introduced quick shots and focus track. Neo 2 builds on that with master shots, smart selfie, and dolly zoom. Gesture control is finally reliable enough to use in public launch, record, land all hands-free. That's huge for solo creators and travelers who don't want to touch the controller for every scene. Palm landing existed before, but Neo 2 just does it gracefully. It descends slowly, reads your hand, and settles without the panic hover Neo 1 sometimes did. Small detail, but it shows how the flight brain has matured. Real-world footage feel. In footage, Neo 1 still looks good. But, put them side by side and Neo 2 feels more cinematic. Panning shots don't bend corners as much. Transitions are silky. And the extra stability means you can fly lower and closer to subjects without ruining the frame. The wind correction algorithm is clearly smarter. Even on gusty coastlines, Neo 2 kept horizon tilt under control. It behaves like a mini air series drone now. If you mainly shoot indoors or small spaces, both do fine. But once you step outside into real conditions, Neo 2 starts earning its name. Who should upgrade and who should wait? If you already own a Neo 1 and fly casually sunset shots, vacation clips, indoor content, you can absolutely wait. Your drone is still relevant. But if you fly often, deal with wind, want better tracking and control, Neo 2 feels like the next chapter. It's not just more resolution, it's more confidence. It's the first time a sub 200 gram drone feels this capable and safe. Verdict. Neo 1 was the beginning of a concept. A pocket safe, beginner friendly camera drone. Neo 2 is that concept fully realized. It's not a revolution, it's refinement done right. The handling, the smarter flight code, the better stability, all make it feel like a premium drone in a toy body. Would I recommend upgrading? If you fly weekly or create content seriously, yes. If you just want simple fun flights, Neo 1 still delivers. That's the beauty of it. DJI didn't kill Neo 1, it polished the idea. So that's my take after flying both for a week. What about you? Would you upgrade or stick with your Neo 1? Drop your verdict below. And if you found this useful, check the description for affiliate links to both drones and subscribe for more real testing before global launches. Case closed, for now.